Alright guys, I've tidied it enough and everybody's still asleep, but we're going to do a quick tour of my sewing room. So mine's actually just attached to the hallway. I don't have a door, which kind of helps with my setup. Um, so as we walk in, this is where I keep all of my patterns. So each of the silver rings is a different pattern and they have either been laminated or they're made out of MDF. So on the top you've got wallets, makeup bags and clutches, and then down the bottom you've got bags basically. Uh, so then this cupboard here is all of my fabric. It's not tidy because I just wanted to do this video before everybody wakes up. That is on my list of things to do today. But it's all blocked into different things. So I've got all my skulls together, all my license fabrics, florals, animals, all of that. So that's not necessarily how it always looks. Then over here, this is the rack where all of the interfacing that I sell you guys lives. Uh, so it's all neatly organized and then on top is my leather section. It just hangs there so it doesn't get damaged and dented. And then those two rolls obviously don't fit on there. Uh, so then if we turn here, we've got my cutting table. Now, Hubby just made this out of yellow tongue flooring. So it is 1.6 by 1.7 meters, which is going to help me cut things for you guys, really. That's why I needed a big one. Now over here... This is, it's got my printer on top, but this is where I keep all of my clothes sewing patterns. Um, so I've pulled one out ready. So I keep them all in these funky little plastic envelopes. So they're clear. So the pattern goes in the front and then all the different sizes that I cut go in Ziploc bags and then are kept in the back. So that is size small if we open it that way. So that's a small shirt in that pattern. Um, I found this the easiest way to store things, just because I did, um, and I have a lot of patterns. So all of the patterns are in brand and number order, so that if I want to see if I have a pattern, it's quite easy to check. Um, I also don't cut my patterns, like the paper tissue stuff, I use something called trace and toil, so that they're always kept intact. Now, under here, I haven't got tidy this bit either, but that is the cupboard where I keep all of my smaller pieces of fabric uh, that are neatly folded and also all of my HTV in the bottom drawer. And then that's my scan and cut so I can cut cool stuff. Uh, the nine cubes under here have all different fabrics in them. Um, so it's just another storage, but they're all usually wide or they're fluffy or whatever. And then this, this is what I use to record. So you guys are always sitting on this and it's on wheels so it's easily portable. And then under the table is where all my vinyl lives um, and my interfacing. So that's my personal stash of interfacing down there. And then all my vinyl has been color blocked to make it easier and make sure I don't double up on buying stuff. So the top is monochromes, browns and creams. So black, white, brown, cream, gray, silver, all that. Then we've got yellow and orange because I've only got one of each. Red, pink, purple. And then the bottom is blues and greens and also my textured um, dragon scale stuff. That stuff's from Spotlight if anybody is interested. And then this is my supplier and all the colors that I can get. I do actually own probably over half of the colors because, you know, I'm excessive. It's fine. All right. So then that tub there is all of the smaller pieces of vinyl. I know they looked a little bit shoved, but they've all been pre-rolled to avoid wrecking them. That I need to stick back up on the wall. My husband got a tattoo artist to draw that over in Malaysia. I love it, but, you know, I've got to get it on the wall. So then we've got my ironing board, which has two Tribiana or one and a bit Tribiana traveler bags and a medium and then this tub under here is for all of my small pieces so they're too small or awkward shape to fold but too big to throw out so they will all become clutches and wallets this is the pillow i shove into bags so i can iron them nicely then we've got my heat press and in that cupboard is uh paint i think actually paints and glues and just weird stuff um, so then we can go around to the other side. So that's the desk that I use to take photos of my stock and also to laminate and also where people sit if they come for sewing lessons, which is obviously no time soon. Uh, next up, we have my cylinder arm machine. So Hubby made me this really cool removable box. So you can take it off and use it as a cylinder arm 
or use it as a flatbed. It is super cool and I promise I will do a tutorial on that machine soon enough. Then my overlocker. So my overlocker gets used more as a table than an overlocker because I only use it when I'm making myself clothes. Uh, so it's got my rivet cam press. So that one pretty much just stays as rivets all the time and in the end the other one changes around other stuff. My domestic machine that I mainly use for buttonholes and then half of my personal stash of hardware and then the other one's down there. So those I got at Spotlight, those containers, um, but I think you can get them at Bunnings and maybe even Kmart as well. So then we go here, my embroidery machine, and then the drawers are full of all the different hoops. So I've got all the smaller hoops in here that fit, and the ones that are too big are just down there at the side. Um, and then this has got all my bobbins and my random sequins because sometimes I put them in key fobs. And also my basing spray lives in here. And then all the needles. Underneath we've got all of my threads. So I've color blocked them into the different colors. Um, I bought a lot because I, when I first started I got all these on clearance. Uh, so they were really cheap. So I overbought and bought way too many. So I'm trying very hard to get through them. Um, and then this tub on the floor, I know it doesn't look like it, but usually what I do is when I've pre-cut and interfaced a bag, if I'm having like a cutting day, it will all go in the tub and then I can sit down and sew. Uh, then I've got my chair, my rubbish bin, my sewing machine that I've started covering stickers because it's awesome. Um, and then under here is where my threads live. So the top one is Vardenum threads and that little one is just left over from the old brand, that yellow. And then the bottom two have got my overlocking threads and normal sewing threads for making clothes. And then in here, I've got all my snaps um, and then just other things that I need in here. So like these are my pattern weights. For anyone that wonders what I use as pattern weights, they're just big bolts. Uh, they're like 69 cents from Bunnings each. So I bought a whole bunch of them. And then all my chains and just other random stuff lives in there. My piping cord lives here. Then I've got this magnetic strip and I put all of my scissors and stuff on it. Um, you can get this from Spotlight or Bunnings or like a homeware shop that sells cutlery because it's also designed to put like knives on your wall. Um, my zipper jig which is attached to my table. It also holds my double-sided tape because I like it when things do more than one thing at a time. Then we've got this is pretty much my center of my room, funnily enough. So it's got pens and marking tools, all of my rulers, my cutting implements, um, my scraper to help um, crease the vinyl, and then, you know, clips and stuff like that. Then we've got my 3D printer, my laptop, um, a box because I had nowhere else to put it. And it doesn't really get in my way because I can't get all the way under. And that there is a rotating cutting mat. So that'll probably end up on the table over there. So there you go. That is my sewing room all set up. And hopefully I won't have to change it around again anymore. All right, guys. Talk to you later.